My name's Jay Davis. Um, I'm a father of five children. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Rhonda, for almost 19 years now. And um, we are fortunate enough to um, be here today after a tragic illness that almost took my life. We're a blended family, three boys from Jay and a boy and a girl from me. We happened to take our children to the same daycare and um, that's where we met. From there he um, asked me out and we got married a year and a half later and now we are one big <laughs> family. If there's such a term, Jay and I were probably weekend Christians. We attended church every Sunday with our children and we were at Faith Bridge at least six years and, you know, kind of sat in the back row. We would play like we were Christian, but we weren't really, we weren't plugged in, we weren't in community. You know, we have to take care of our souls and there's, there's ways to do that. And we had separated from that uh, totally. So Mr. Davis had a condition we call idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It's a progressive scarring of the small airways within the lungs. So um, there's, it's usually a, a pretty slow deterioration. I kind of beat the odds. Usually it's a five-year death sentence when they tell you you have it, but um, I fought through it and I kept it to myself. Rhonda knew, but I didn't let on that it was a big deal. I guess because he seemed okay and normal and doing sports with the kids and, you know, we were water skiing on the weekends and I didn't think much of it. It's an odd disease in that, um, you know, a lot of patients, and in Mr. Davis it happened as well, there sometimes is a trigger and then something happens that kind of accelerates this process and they get real sick very quickly. By 2014, it was a downhill slide pretty quickly. When you can't breathe and you don't have enough oxygen, it's a it's pretty scary feeling. You're thinking about, you know, this could be my time, and um, I wasn't ready. With IPF, the, um, there are no drugs. There's no cure for it. Um, it's only a lung transplant. I went to the transplant center and started doing the preliminary testing to qualify to receive a lung transplant. The uh, last day was to check his heart and they found out that he had blockage. So before they would do anything about the lungs, they had to do a triple bypass. So that led us to the walking into the, the surgery in March uh, to get heart surgery and then things fell apart from there. After the triple bypass, he never, his lungs completely shut down. And that's when he had to go on life support. He went, he went into the heart bypass part of it with severely restricted lung function. Um, and then again, when they then got worse, you know, that was the end of the road. There was a room off of the ICU waiting room and it was almost like the principal's office, like you didn't want to be called into that room because you saw families being called in and it, it wasn't good. And so they called our whole family in there and uh, told us that there probably wasn't much that we could do. On the outside, I was strong, but at night, I would go in our bedroom closet and I would lay on the floor in the fetal position and I would just cry and scream because I didn't want any of the kids to know how scared I was. But I just, I would beg, dear God, please, please. Then I had a 
uh, ICU nurse that would come in and uh, she would pray over me and she would sing to me. I recall her telling me all the time, just don't worry, hang on to the hand of Jesus. And she came one day and she was singing and she said, I know it's bad, but don't worry, hang on to the hand of Jesus. And I saw him that morning and I just saw something in his eyes. I knew that he wouldn't make it through the week. And I cried and cried and cried because I didn't, I didn't want to lose him. So I chose to go and sit out in the praying garden. I begged God, you know, we fought for so long and so hard. Please don't make it all for nothing. And if not, please get him out of us, you know, just take him, let him come be with you so he isn't suffering anymore. But I recall laying there in the bed being helpless and telling God, I surrender. It's up to you. I can't do it by myself. As hard as it was, I'd let go and I said, he's yours. And I surrendered him to God. I saw a hand come to me and I grabbed it. And a feeling of peace and assurance came over me that it was gonna be okay. No matter what happened, I didn't feel like, okay, I'm, I'm cured but I felt like no matter what happened, it was okay. And I went back upstairs to sit in ICU, and um, I sat down, and not one second later, my cell phone rang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 